So Apache Iceberg is open table format that was developed by Netflix around 2017 or thereabout. Now this is now open source and everybody contributes to that. But to better understand how this is important and how useful this particular open table format is, especially in the new modern data lake formats, then we need to understand how this came to be. If you can still recall, essentially when we started uh, as data engineer with the initial integrations, you started with um, the good old ELT, ETL, isn't it? ETL. So which gives us access to do the extraction from multiple sources, transform them with some layers, and then load them to some destinations or whatever location you are. Then come about the ELT, which is the extract, load, and transform, as um, the, the name connotates. Uh, but essentially what this is about is you have all data stored in some data lake house format, uh, data lake house, and then you can do the transformation and do uh, extract what you want, essentially from individual files that is inside this um, data lake house. Then the last bit is the new um, open table format, which is the OTF. Uh, essentially, it's not an integration um, paradigm, but essentially this is like a, a way you interact with the data, especially if you are using the ELT uh, in these um, modern data lake houses. So ETL essentially, you have a central data warehouse, which is going to be your, 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 your centralized locations where all the data will be loaded into. And you can have as many small data sources in here it could be a single um it could be a single data warehouse that you're trying to migrate or you're trying to integrate into or some provider are sending you some data or you are doing the extraction yourself wherever it is everything is getting loaded into this particular data warehouse and of course you can have multiple integrations uh, between these layers and then eventually load them to some data warehouse so of course this is going to be using something like if you started with something like um, SSIS, you can still recall, um, that works just fine. Or you use something like Talent, uh, or you use something like uh, as you go along, something like uh, Apache Airflow for some of these transformations, which is, which works just fine. And then come DBT, uh, which helps you to do both ELT and the ETL layer. So essentially your d data warehouse is getting integrated and loaded into data warehouse period full stop and this essentially enforces some form, uh, formats like the schema and this helps you to better have better confidence inside of this data like the durability acidity um, consistency and stuff like that essentially uh, Data is there. Now, uh, come the, uh, we, we come to the era of the lake houses where you can have even data warehouses inside your data lake houses. And then that is, gets integrated with multiple data warehouses, multiple data files. E essentially, as many data as possible. It could be audio, it could be video, it could be files, it could be JSON. Whatever data format can just be loaded into the data lake house. This gets messy just pretty fast. And your data lake house uh, essentially just sits there you can now do the extraction and do the transformations that you want for visualizations or whatever insights that you want to derive from there okay now so we migrated uh, essentially into the era of data lake houses and this is where something like a prominent uh, dbt comes into play you can now uh, extract data into or put them inside some external tables if you're using something like redshift put some files into redshift um, external tables and then do the transformations from there uh, this works just fine essentially because this is uh, more like your s3 i'm just using s3 as like the general versions because you have different versions on uh, azure different version of aws alibaba cloud and the rest of the uh, data providers uh, cloud providers all right so the data sits there you do the uh, transformation but this doesn't enforce schema it doesn't uh, because now you have to like be the one to uh, design essentially how you want the, to present this data. It could be straight from your lake house to some visualization layer. It could be from lake, lake house to some other um, 
transfer uh, another another folder inside the same lake house or another table or whatever it is you just get uh, messy really fast you know and it's not as messy it's just like the way you want to present the data uh, essentially now come Apache iceberg now Apache iceberg as we were saying helps you to understand how best to put the data inside the lake house and better connect them uh, you know for presentation uh, purposes now this OTF uh, essentially has uh, uh, an, a barrier in this case for for working with it. So each of your files that you have in your S3 essentially is going to be somewhere here. So you can have, let's say, Parquet. Let's say Parquet. You have maybe Havro, or you have the ORC file. Now it could be as many Parquet, as many Avro, as many ORC files, maybe support for JSONs and the rest like that. But all of these are like the, the raw files that you currently have. Now you have a layer on top of this. On top of this layer, you are going to have the manifest file. And this manifest file is going to be connected to as many of your raw data file that is inside of the lake house as possible. So think of let's say 20 hundreds, yeah? So in this case, you could have a single manifest file that contains all the path to all these files that are sitting there, whether Parquet, Avro, or, or Oak file. So in this case, you're going to have the manifest file. So I'm going to put this, I'm going to change the color to separate to you to show that it's uh, so you have the the manifest file. Now the manifest file could be just connected to just one of this, two of this, or the combination of all of them. Then you can also have another manifest file in here which connects to just this one or and this one and another one just connected to the first one so manifest file manifest file okay so that's how the the structure of uh, manifest file looks like it's, it's it's a little bit messy the way i drew it but essentially you can have a single manifest file with different combinations of all of these raw data files now on top of this you have the manifest list so i'm going to put this as manifest list let me change the color to to blue so you have the manifest list so i'm going to say this is the manifest list manifest list so I'll put this as manifest list yeah manifest list now this manifest list can be connected to multiple manifest files so you can have let's say or your raw files is in hundreds of thousands yeah but your manifest files will be in let's say hundreds or even thousands then your manifest list will be in tens or probably hundreds then on top of that layer we continue but for now just think of uh, as you have the, the essentially the raw data file uh sitting as in in in, in their numerosity uh, you have them a little bit lesser in the manifest list containing an array of all of these files so you have the manifest list connected to a single or or just uh, all of them uh, as as you go along so you can have manifest list one manifest list two manifest list three as as many as possible now the concept is getting clearer now because you understand the raw file is connected to manifest file manifest file is connected to manifest list now what curates all of them is called the the metadata file now this metadata file is what really sets things um, apart so manifest list and you have the meta metadata file i'll call it met f you could call it mfl you could call it whatever you like so but the metadata file what it does is connect to a single snapshot of all of this manifest list so if you have let's say uh, 10 manifest files inside of a single manifest list but what that means is if you remove a single file from the directory you delete it you had a new one or whatever it is you've changed the structure what manifest file is going to do is uh, make sure that individual snapshot at a particular time is maintained so you could have snapshot zero you could have snapshot zero snapshot one snapshot two as many snapshots as possible inside a single um, metadata file now this metadata file is like a single source of truth 
where all the files are connected to the manifest list and the manifest files and essentially the raw files uh, as it cascades down uh, through the, throughout the system. Then the final layer in this case would be the catalog. The catalog. Now this catalog points to the latest manifest uh, metadata file. Yeah. So the latest ma metadata file is going to be where your catalog is sit sitting. Uh, think of your table. Yeah. Your table is going to be connected to some data in your you know normal uh, or RDBMS uh, system where you have everything stored in some. Uh, in some tables, yeah, but inside of OTF paradigm, you have the catalog, which is the table uh, in this case, connected to the metadata file. The metadata metadata file is, that will be the latest metadata file, anyways. So that will be connected to the latest snapshots of all of the files in the in the system. So the snapshot will now be connected to the metadata list, uh, manifest list, and the manifest list connected to the me manifest file manifest file to the to the raw data so you have this connected to or pointing pointing directly to the metadata file in this case which is snapshot zero snapshot one and this snapshot zero can just be part of this this could be just this one and um, this could be this and this could be that but inside of that you 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 have essential control of what happens in the past what is currently happening or uh, and what has maybe happened so much uh, far back in the past so the, the present situation of the, the 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 data lake is maintained inside of this metadata file, and you go down to the meta uh, manifest list, then the manifest file, then the the raw data file. So this is going to be your table, uh, uh, which is pointing to the latest manifest file. So essentially, this is uh, what the architecture of um, Apache Iceberg look like uh, under the hood. So I know this is kind of interesting, especially if this is your first time of getting to know what Apache Iceberg means.